Hi, I'm going to be solving the prob AP problem from 1997. So it's the cylinder of mass M radius R on a, an inclined plane. And it's going to roll without slipping and it will start from rest. So I have to part A is determining the translational speed of the cylinder when it reaches the bottom of the inclined plane. So to do this, we make an energy statement. Potential initial plus kinetic initial equals potential final plus kinetic final. And because uh, I'm selecting this part is where the potential energy equals zero, and since the the equation and since the cylinder starts at rest, there's only potential energy in the first part, so it's it's mg h equals one half i omega square plus one half m v square, and then mg m g h equals one half times one half m r squared times v over r because it's rolling without slipping omega will equal velocity of center of mass over radius plus one half m v squared so the r squareds would cancel the radiuses would cancel out the mass would cancel out this will end up being g h equals one fourth m i mean one fourth v squared plus one half v squared so g h equals three fourths v squared v equals four thirds g h square root and that's how you do part A of this problem. So part B of this problem is just drawing a, the force diagram for the cylinder. So then it's going on an incline, so the x, y axis will be like will be slanted. So the force normal will be up on this slanted axis. And then the force friction will be going the opposite way of where it's rolling. It goes this way. And there's also force gravity, which goes down this way. And that's, and that's all there is for this part of the problem. So for part C, I have to show that the acceleration of the cylinder is 2 thirds g sin theta. To do this, so first I'll be doing my four statements. So sigma f y equals force normal minus f g cosine theta because we can see it from this force diagram and then that will end up equaling m g cos theta equals f n. And then the second one is Sigma fx equals ma equals mg sine theta minus f fr. And we also need to make a torque statement. So sigma tau equals i alpha. And tau, since there's only one four, there's only a uh, And at the pivot point, there's only one force, which is force friction. So it would be F, FR times radius, because force times distance, equals one half m r squared times acceleration over radius, because that's what alpha comes in translationally. And then both these r's will cross out this r, and you'll end up with F. F R equals one half M A and then you plug this back into this equation and you get M A equals M G sine theta minus one half M A 
when you add these together, you'll get 3 halves ma equals mg sine theta. You cross out the m's, and acceleration equals 2 thirds g sine theta, just like the problem said. And that's how you do part C. So for part D, we need to find the minimum coefficient of friction. And to do that, so first we need to solve for, for force normal. So then sigma Fy equals Fn minus Fg cos theta. So Fn equals Mg cos theta. And, F, and now we just, we just do the same uh, sigma f statement for the x direction. fx equals m a equals m g sine theta minus f f r. And f f r equals u s f n minus u s and f n equals m g cos theta. So we just plug that in right here mg cos theta and they all have mass so we, we can cancel mass out of everything and then we can also plug in two-thirds g sine theta for acceleration from what we got in the last problem so two-thirds g sine theta equals mg sine theta minus mu s G sine theta minus mu s g cos theta, and then you you get uh, variables on the same side. So mu s g cos theta equals one third g sine theta, and mu s you can you can cancel out the g's. So mu s equals one third sine over cosine, which is tan. So one third tan theta. So part E is asking, now the coefficient of friction is less than the value determined in part D so that the cylinder both rotates and slips. So part one, we need to figure out whether the translation speed will be greater or less than or equal to the translation null speed in part A. So it will be greater than it because since there's less friction, uh, since it's since it's ro uh, slipping without rotating, and the coefficient of friction is lower, so when it's so it's just, there's less energy going into rotation and more is going translationally, so that's one reason it's going faster. Another reason is since there's less friction to make up for it and have the same acceleration because of this sigma f statements, there has to be a faster speed. Otherwise, with the same acceleration and less friction. Uh, it, it wouldn't be possible. So if you keep everything else the same you and decrease the friction, it has to go faster. And also because when there's less energy going into rotation and more energy going into translational movement, it goes faster. And then for part two, we need to indicate whether the total kinetic energy is greater than, less than, or equal to the previous case of rolling without slipping. So it's less than the previous case because it's sliding instead of rolling, and because it's sliding, like it has like more, it feels more friction and loses more en kinetic energy through to heat, and because it loses more energy to heat, it has less kinetic energy than the other case, and that's how you solve this AP problem.